Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Monday, December 28th, 2020, and today we're going to be taking a look at a uniform shift across four states from 2004 to 2020. Why are we doing this? Well, all of these states have pretty much moved the same way. That means the margins have changed pretty much the exact same election after election after election. Now, these four states have gone from states that were solidly for the Republican Party to Democratic states or at least competitive, but still a Republican victory. These four states are Virginia, Colorado, Georgia, and Texas. Three out of the four voted for Joe Biden. Two out of the four voted for Obama. So when you're looking at these states, you know, and Clinton, actually, Virginia, Colorado, Texas, and Georgia, they're all swing states. But let's go back to 2004. This was a time period where George W. Bush was able to win in the Sunbelt region by very large margins. In fact, this election performance was very strong, enough so that California was only won by single digits. California was won by a Democrat by single digits. Digits. It was actually a decrease from the support for the Democratic Party in 2000, just 2000. I'm so used to saying a number after that. But when you're looking at these states in particular, what do you notice? Well, first things first, they're all Republican. George Bush won them all by likely and safe margins, except for Colorado, which was won by Bush by almost a likely margin, 4.7%. Hillary Clinton won that for by 4.9% for reference back in 2016. But looking at Virginia, this is a state where the Democratic Party won by double digits in 2000. They won by 10.1%. Bush won it by 8.2%. And you have to start asking, why did George W. Bush do so well across these regions? Well, Virginia, Colorado, and Texas. The Latino vote is very important, very crucial in these three states. And it also is important to note that not just in these three states, but Arizona, Florida, George W. Bush did better than numerous Republicans amongst Hispanic voters. So much better. So much better. I mean, it's not even comparable at this point. Donald Trump did do better in very particular regions, but George W. Bush won Florida by five points and still, you know, got 286 electoral votes. He won by five points and still didn't do as well as Donald Trump did in 2016 electoral vote wise. I mean, he won Texas by a very large margin, which we'll get to in just a moment. So when you're looking at where George W. Bush did well in, he did well because of certain demographic groups that have now moved over to the Democratic Party. And I also want to point out that West Virginia was actually competitive. Bush won it by 12.9%. I find that fascinating. But then again, you realize just four years prior to this, you would have considered West Virginia a Democratic stronghold. But then Al Gore lost it. When Al Gore lost it, it was pretty important to note because he lost it by six points. Clinton had won that state by 15 points. So Let's go ahead and ignore that. Let's go ahead and move on to these four states. Like I mentioned, Virginia, Colorado went to the GOP, but Georgia and Texas were much larger margins. Georgia went to Bush by 17%. 17%. This is the first election that I was alive for, and Bush won it by 17 points. And the last election, which I couldn't even vote for, Biden won it by just under a percentage point. I have seen the 17 point shift in favor of the Democratic Party over just my lifetime. And I know that may seem like a long time, but it really isn't. It hasn't even hit two decades. And when you're looking over at Texas, look at that margin, even more deafening for the Republican Party. Look at that 23%, 23%. I find that fascinating that Texas was won by a Republican by that large of a margin. I know I shouldn't be surprised, but I am given our current uh, electoral map and the results from the 2020 election. That is so interesting that Bush was able to win by such a large margin. And this is when we actually see, you know, pundits start to say that this was a maxed out performance for the Republican Party. Those aren't my words, but they, they referred to it as a maxed out uh, performance um, across the Sun Belt for the Republican Party. And honestly, I agree. Looking at that 23 point margin in Texas. Wow. That 17 point margin in Georgia. That's really good. An eight-point margin in Virginia, a five-point margin in Colorado for the GOP. We would not see something like this today. It doesn't matter who runs for president. Wouldn't happen. Let's go ahead and take a look at this blurry image because, sorry about that. I don't know really how to uh, make it not blurry. But let's go ahead and look at the 2004 to 2020 um, Democrat to Republican presidential result. In 2004, voted for George W. Bush by eight points. Flipped to Obama in 2008 went by six points in Virginia. Let's look at Colorado. Goes from minus five for the Democrats to plus nine. Texas, minus 23 to minus 12. Georgia, minus 17 to minus five. So very significant gains, very significant gains from 2004 to 2008. 
But that can be explained. That can be explained by the fact that Obama was a one in a lifetime candidate and he flipped states such as Indiana. He was competitive in North and South Dakota. He almost flipped Montana. Missouri was within a few thousand votes. So Barack Obama in 2008, had the Democrats ran him in this election, Texas would have gone blue. But that was not the same electoral landscape, which is why he was able to swing it 11, 12 points, but wasn't able to win the state. So let's go ahead and compare 2004 to 2012, because 2012 was the time period where people started to dislike Obama. He didn't have the highest approval rating entering into his re-election, but he still was able to win with 332 electoral votes. But I can tell you the Romney campaign was very confident in their chances. And based off the preliminary election data, they probably should have been. But also, they shouldn't have thought that they were going to win. But that's besides the point. Let's look at 2004 to 2012. 2004, minus 8 in Virginia for the Republicans, plus 4 for the Democrats in Virginia. Colorado, minus 5. Uh, in 2004, plus five in 2012. Texas, minus 23, minus 16. Georgia, minus 17 to minus eight. So you will start to see that there was pretty much a, a half reduction in some of these states or a completely overturned flip in some of these states, which I think is very interesting. I think that really goes to show that the Democratic Party did actually make gains and they've been pretty consistent. Looking at the swing on the bottom of your screen as well, you can see that the swing in 2008 was double digits. The swing in 2012 was not necessarily um, the, the same type of, I guess, double digits, but uh, for all of the states, it was 7% in Texas, 8.7% in Georgia. But then 2016, 2016 was a time period where we actually saw that the Democratic Party perform very well in these states. And then 2020, of course, Virginia, Colorado, and Georgia all went to the Democratic Party. So it, it is interesting to see how, by the way, these swings are all referring back to 2004. They're not each year. But looking at 2000, comparing it to 2004, these swings have been around the same. They ended up completely at 18, 17, 17%, 17, 18%, which is something that we've seen uniformly, but we don't usually see these types of trends across a number of states. And it could be due to the fact that all of these states are increasing their minority populations. Texas and Colorado are the only two states that are expected to gain electoral votes. But if you're looking at the regions where we see a minority influx, Northern Virginia, Central Colorado, big cities in Texas, Atlanta metro in Georgia, where two thirds of the state's population resides. Looking at these states, it makes sense. It makes sense that they have narrowed up or at least shifted by such large margins since 2004. But I think it's really cool to note how much you've seen it go from solid red to competitive to the Democratic Party in 2020, going from four Republican states to three Democratic states and one Republican state. Let's compare them. So we remember the margins. Colorado plus 13.5 percent for Joe Biden. What was the victory for George W. Bush? Five points. Texas. Trump wins it by 5.5 percent. What was the victory for George W. Bush? 23 percent. Georgia goes to Biden by 0.2 percent, flipped for the first time in 28 years. When was the sorry? What was the margin of victory for George W. Bush? 17 percent. And Virginia, which went to Bush by eight points, went to Biden by 10.1 percent. You cannot ignore these shifts. They're indicative of the entire Sun Belt. Not all of the Sun Belt has had such significant shifts, but who knows what happens in 2020? Because 2004, it goes from being four Republican states and then moves over to 2020 with three Democratic states and one Republican state. Who knows? In 2024, 20 years later, it could end up being four Democratic states. Texas has gotten narrower and narrower and narrower every election. Let's skip over 2008 just because it was a Democratic wave year. I mean that very literally. It was a, a huge Democratic wave year looking at the margin for uh, Barack Obama in the presidency, 365 to, I believe, 173. Um, looking at more than just that, the Senate, 59-41. The Democrats had nearly a 60-seat majority. The House of Representatives, 250-plus seats for the Democratic Party. So looking at the performance for the Democrats in 2008, phenomenal year. So let's skip over it. We didn't really see any wave years on the presidential map besides 2008. But from 2004 to 2012, those swings are significant. 12 points in Virginia, 10 points in Colorado. Those were starting to uh, show us the warning signs that these states were not going to be as solid for the, Demo for the Republican Party, or at least competitive for the Republican Party as they previously had been, especially entering into 2016. Just 12 years later, just 12 years later, and Virginia and Colorado completely switch. Uh, political alignments. Texas and Georgia, the sw shift from 2004 to 2012 could not be mistaken. You know, looking at the Texas and Col Georgia shifts, 
they weren't super significant, but 2016, they absolutely were. 2016 was the time when Texas went down to being single digits for the Republican Party. What happened this election? It went down even closer to being even lean at some point in the future. Georgia went from being a state that was solid for the Republican Party to a Democratic state. Uh, you know, and I find it very easy to visualize given this map on, on the website. And I think it's really cool to see how it's actually changed so much over time. There's a lot more red in 2004 um, and in 2020. You will see that that blue has pretty much remained, but also addition of Arizona, Georgia, and less red spots in Texas and North Carolina and even South Carolina. So 2004, there's a reason why Bush did very, very well. He won amongst key demographic groups that other Republicans had not previously been able to tap into. But as the elections progressed, all of these states have moved uniformly in favor of the Democratic Party, which also also, well, uh, also should spell out bad news. For the Republican Party in 2024 and does. And I think that the Republican Party should be looking at these swings and wondering what they can do. Because at first, they were giving up Colorado and Virginia. That was something that they were okay with losing in 2008. But in 2012, they heavily fought for Virginia and Colorado. But 2016 rolled around. Hillary Clinton chose Tim Kaine. They knew Virginia was a lost cause. But the Trump campaign still focused on Colorado. And really, they weren't worried about Texas or Georgia. 2020, the Democratic Party knew they had Virginia and Colorado. They knew it, but they still remained uh, throwing ads there. Trump still tried to uh, become competitive in Virginia and Colorado. Did it work? Obviously not. But in Texas, the Republican Party wasn't too worried. I mean, Trump said it himself. He said that there's no way that I lose Texas or even Georgia. But he did lose Georgia. And Georgia was a state where the Democratic Party has been investing in since 2004, has been investing in heavily. Stacey Abrams has expedited that process. What probably would have taken a decade went down to just being two years. But Texas... If the Democratic Party can tap into that state the same way they did Georgia, the GOB should be very worried because all of these states are shifting together. And it may have taken 16 years for three of them to become Democratic states, but who knows what's next for Texas. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my post-2020 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.